vision impairment or loss of eyesight due to accidents, chemical burns or abuse could be quite a painful and traumatic experience. Yet, the majority of the poor in a country neglect their eye problems due to the high cost of the treatments. So today we introduce you to an outstanding women scientist who has done some indigenous work and has prevented a number of people from going blind. Let us move over to her lab. She is a rare combination of a pathologist and a scientist rolled into one. She was trained in general pathology and later specialized in the pathology of the eye. Moved by the increasing number of cases involving eye accidents, especially those of children, she seriously began to wonder, why not do something and save their eyes from going blind? In April 2001, she and her team made ripples by coming up with a unique technique of culturing corneal epithelium. Meet Dr. Gita Kashyap Venuganti, an ocular pathologist and the head of ophthalmic pathology service and stem cell laboratory at the LV Prasad Eye Institute or LVPEI Hyderabad on how she discovered the scientist in her. While I was doing pathology, I was interested in mostly tumor pathology and uh, I was uh, like while I was in general pathology also, one of my specialties was oncopathology and uh, even after I took up ocular pathology, I had a chance to continue with my oncopathology uh, preference and here we deal with a lot of eye tumors and one of them is a retinoblastoma and it's very touching because it affects the children. I wanted to do something in this field. So I learned to do uh, cell cultures. We were trying to create uh, uh, cell cultures from retinoblastoma patients. I had standardized this technique of cell cultures. And it just happened over a cup of tea with my colleague who, who just uh, threw up a challenging uh, question at me. Uh, why are you uh, doing this uh, cell cultures for tumors when you know that it's an end stage? Why don't you do it for some patients who uh, we know that they're suffering from a disease called as limbal stem cell deficiency? By that, by that time, there were a few published papers uh, from some groups who had worked on stem cells. And my colleague, just uh, Virendra Sangwan, he, he just challenged me. He says, the, you know, the challenge lies in treating these patients who are young, who are suffering from a very simple disease called chemical burns. We, we can help these patients and uh, I think we should work on these lines. So, and uh, I really, I very seriously took that uh, suggestion and I said, yes, why not? And uh, I, I spent some time reading the literature and uh, went through the published papers and then uh, in short time we came up with a proposal that uh, we would like to culture the uh, stem cells from the limbal tissue. Adult stem cells are found in the limbus, a part of the eye which regenerates the ocular surface of the cornea. Conditions such as chemical burns damage the limbus resulting in limbal stem cell deficiency characterized by corneal scarring leading to corneal blindness. The treatment of this condition is to replenish the damaged limbal stem cells by limbal tissue transplantation followed by corneal transplantation. This process neither involves embryonic tissue nor aborted fetuses. We take a limbal tissue which is known to harbor the stem cells. We don't isolate the stem cells as in the, in the form of a cell. We take the tissue which is known to harbor the stem cells, we use an appropriate uh, vehicle, what we call as a substrate, and we, get, we then make the cells grow on this membrane using the appropriate media. And once the uh, cells grow, they make a big epithelium. So from one millimeter of tissue, we have a big epithelium which can be used from, for patients. So if a patient is suffering from a disease of one eye, if one eye is uh, uh, affected by limbal stem cell deficiency, we harvest a little bit of tissue from the healthy eye, expand it, make a membrane, give it to the diseased eye. That's in, 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 in principle what we do. The cultured stem cells could be from the patient's own healthy eye or from another person's living or dead. 80% of the cases reported at the LD Prasad Eye Institute are of patients due to chemical burns. The work on stem cell transplantation was initiated at the LD Prasad Eye Institute following the lead taken by other groups worldwide. 
By the end of 2001, Dr. Gita and her team's clinical experience led them to develop another new technique called composite culture for the first time in the world. How different is her work when compared to the rest of the world? Now there was already a precedence, so we started our work based on the published literature. But while we were dealing with these patients, we came across some new problems which probably were not seen elsewhere in the world. We saw patients who had very severe ocular surface disease, which was affecting not only the central part of the cornea and the limbus, but it was also affecting the surrounding conjunctiva. And that was the more severe form of the disease. So my colleague, while we were interacting and discussing the results of the, of the initial studies, uh, we realized that there was a need to, to grow the conjunctival stem cells as well. And that led uh, us to another uh, small project where we started growing the conjunctival cells. Then there was a need to put them together. And that was one of the most challenging uh, things and that's something novel about our study. What we did was we took these two types of tissues and put them on a single membrane. And exactly uh, the way it is present in nature, the central corneal or limbal cells, the periphery conjunctival. And uh, one interesting uh, question we faced was, how do we separate the two? Then again we took the clue from the nature and we thought if that limbus is circular, so anything which divides these two cells should be circular. Then we came up with this idea that why not use a ring barrier. Then we created a ring barrier, we got it designed and uh, we, we put this limbal stem, uh, cells in the center, conjunctiva at the periphery. So that gave us a very good uh, advantage. So we had one membrane with two types of cells. And on one, so it's uh, uh, for the surgeon to uh, to use it for clinical application was a very easy thing. So this is something which has come up now uh, in our study, and uh, I guess because nobody sees the patients like this the way we do, and that uh, prompted us to create this uh, what we call now call it as a composite culture or a co-culture of limbal cells and the conjunctival cells. In the last two and a half years, Geeta and her team generated hundreds of limbal and conjunctival cultures which were transplanted to more than 160 patients suffering from severe ocular surface diseases. The interim results showed clinical success in 75 to 80 percent of the patients at one year follow-up. The day I saw my cells, the first picture of the cells growing we really celebrated and then it was followed by when the patient was uh, recovered you know the patient regained vision after this tra uh, transplantation that was a very rewarding moment for the whole team actually ocular oncology is a nascent but rapidly developing subspeciality of ophthalmology that deals with tumors of the eye eyelids orbit and the adenoxa India accounts for over 20% of eye cancers worldwide but has only 5% of the world's infrastructure and trained manpower to manage them. We get a lot of tumors. In fact, this institute has a maximum number of specimens of ocular pathology coming to the department and now we have crossed a magic number of 2000 per year and uh, we get tumors of the eye, of the lid, of the orbit, various types of uh, specimens which are removed from the eye that come to my department. And uh, I diagnose all these lesions and whatever interesting uh, question comes out of this study, we take it up as a research topic and I continue to work on that. That's how I'm, uh, I'm, in, I'm developing the subspeciality of ocular pathology. Dr. Geeta secured her MBBS from the JLM Medical College Ajmer in 1985. Unfortunately, her dream of becoming a pediatrician went topsy-turvy when she got married and had to discontinue. I did think of becoming a pediatrician, but after MBBS what happened was uh, I got married during my internship and I did get my pediatrics, which I, which I always wanted to do. But uh, because of my new status now, and uh, I had moved from north to south, and this caused a lot of disturbance in my, uh, in my mental frame and even my family life. So I didn't want to stay in Ajmer and continue for three more years as in my pediatrics. I wanted to be with my family and join with the new family. And that's the reason I gave up. And then I settled down in Hyderabad and uh, planning to take up another specialty, the second choice, which was pathology. And that's how I ended up doing my post-graduation in pathology. At that point of time, judging by the family situation, pathology was her second choice. In 1993, she got her MD pathology from the Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences at Hyderabad where she could establish her link at LV Prasad Eye Institute.
I joined NIMS to take up DMB and meanwhile uh, my professor uh, Dr. Ratnakar uh, wanted me to take up ocular pathology. So I, I joined the MD program at Nizams and during my residency uh, ocular pathology was uh, my speciality and my thesis was in ocular pathology actually and that's how I got trained into ocular pathology. She also received another degree, DMB Pathology, in 1994 from New Delhi. For more than four years, she worked as a consultant pathologist at Medwin Hospitals, Hyderabad, focusing mostly on oncopathology. Soon after, she took over the pathology department at the behest of Dr. G. N. Rao, the present director of L.B. Prasad Eye Institute, and since then, there was no looking back. Dr. D. Balasubramanian, Director of Research, has some very encouraging things to tell about her. Dr. Gita Kashyap came and joined us here about five, five and a half years ago. And we took her because she is rigorous, methodical, is willing to be, uh, what shall I say, she is willing to repeat things unless it becomes quite alright and so on. In other words, she has this uh, penchant to be of high quality. She has also bloomed as a scientist largely because of her own independent uh, drive. She is willing to cooperate very well and I think it is a tribute that she has been able to get uh, competitive research grants. Obviously as a person she is pleasant, easy to work with but she is tough. She is tough on her students and she is also tough on herself. She not only got the opportunity to head the diagnostics, but also to be in the academics as well. 60% of her time goes to pathology, her first love, and the rest goes for research. I start with uh, my reporting. That's the first thing I would like to do in the morning. And after finishing my reporting, which takes about uh, two hours, I dictate the reports and then break for a cup of tea then uh, I, I get back to diagnosing those lesions again looking back at the reports and meanwhile I, if there is any uh, operating uh, room which is busy and if I have cases for frozen sections uh, I give uh, the diagnosis on frozen tissues and uh, sometimes I do FNACs of what's called fine needle aspiration cytology which is nothing but taking out uh, some blood or cells from a lump in some patients and sometimes I'm called to do a bone marrow aspiration uh, from some patients who are suffering from some tumors and uh, then I, I keep going uh, to my research work I have some students here about uh, six students who work with me and one postdoc and I could, could I keep going to the research lab and help them with their I look at the cells and other tissues and I monitor those things Dr. Gita has to her credit about 45 publications in both national and international journals her paper on rapid intraoperative of orbital and ocular lesions by squash and imprint cytology received the attention of the American Academy of Ophthalmology news update in the year 2002 and has also been accepted for publication by the prestigious journal Ophthalmology. She got the opportunity to visit many parts of the world including USA, UK and Europe. She presented papers at the American Academy of Ophthalmology and the American Academy of Ophthalmic Pathology and was also invited to give lectures at many centers in USA and Scotland, mostly on the techniques of culturing limbal epithelium. When abroad, she also gets to learn new techniques in cell biology and also the opportunity to establish a network for future collaborations. L.B. Prasad Eye Institute has provided her with space for a new stem cell research lab named after Sudhakar and Srikant Ravi who liberally donated $100,000 for stem cell research. The stem cell lab has recently acquired a confocal microscope facility that gives a three-dimensional imaging of test samples. The work is so satisfying that it's worth putting all these extra efforts and anything worth it you have to pay a little price and it's nothing compared to the satisfaction that we get working here. <laughs> Premier Eye Hospital, apart from providing consistent services in all areas of eye care, 
Its unique state-of-the-art facility has other wings like product development, community care, rehabilitation, eye research and education. According to data collected by the LV Prasad Eye Institute from various sources including the WHO, one child becomes blind every minute and one person loses his sight every second. There are 45 million blind people in the world today, including 10 million in India alone. It is now a collaborative center with WHO for the Mission 2020 Right to Sight. The secret behind Geeta's phenomenal success is her husband, who has been a strong pillar of support when she was trying to balance her home and career interspersed with difficult pregnancies. Uh, the support has been there right through. It's more of a mutual support and it's not a one-way uh, traffic uh, kind of a scene. And that way the whole thing has worked out much better. And uh, it's gone much beyond expectations, my expectations overall. And uh, the sheer commitment and the dedication and the work, uh, the way she was involved day in and day out. Uh, I never expected this kind of a success in such a short period. As soon as I get back home, I uh, just mentally switch off from the work and I wait for my children to come and I spend a lot of time with them. I also have my in-laws downstairs uh, with whom I have a very close uh, rapport and we sit and discuss and uh, we, do, we do socialize a lot and uh, many two or three times in a week I go to my children's, uh, my daughter's dance class and I enjoy sitting there watching these uh, children perform. That's a uh, relaxation for me. I listen to music and uh, playing with my dog. I think that relaxes me a lot. Dr. Gita is proud of his son, Akshay, who has a passion for music, and her daughter, Ashwita, a debutant in Red Matyam, recently gave her first solo public performance. Seeing my mother as a doctor, I feel I can do something more than that. I can achieve more than that. And dance being my main focus, I will always hold a dance center, having only a class of my own. I like civil services, I like mass communications, so these are my two likings, so I have to decide which one I to take. Dr. Gita's long-term goal of future research is to make retinal cells to treat patients from blinding retinal diseases to restore back the eyesight. If you get self-confidence and courage, I think then the best comes out of you. By making use of available facilities, encouragement and excellent teamwork at the LV Prasad Eye Institute, Dr. Keita could successfully nurture her scientific talent to carry out the path-breaking research you have just seen. She is a lady who has this never-see-die attitude towards life and work and her country needs many more women scientists like her. We wish her lots of luck.